Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be covering some modified internal rate of return MIRR examples. Uh, I already made a video covering the concept of MIRR and also comparing it to the just the simple IRR calculation. So I do recommend that you check that video out because I'm not going to be spending a lot of time explaining the concepts. I'm just going to be diving into examples very quickly. So let's get started. So a quick overview, MIRR is calculated by projecting the free uh, future value of uh, cash outflows for a project using the company's cost of capital. The sum of these future values in the final period of the investment is then discounted to equate the capital outlay of the project today. The discount rate used to equate the two numbers is the modified internal rate of return. Right. So looking at a project, you have cash outflows, what you spend to invest in that project and cash inflows is what you receive. Now, the cash outflow with the spend is the outlay and the cash inflows are compounded all the way to the final period of that investment horizon and then discounted back to equate the outlay. The discount rate used is the modified internal rate of return. And this is different from just a simple internal rate of return uh, assumption where the big problem with the IRR calculation is the reinvestment assumption. It assumes that you can invest um, the, the respective cash inflows from that project at the same IRR rate. So if your internal rate of return is 77% for a respective project, then you're assuming that through years one through 10, the cash inflows that you will receive can be invested at that same rate, which just doesn't make sense because across that 10 year timeline, the business cycle might change and you know the, the markets might change. And so the investments available for that respective company are different. Okay, and so that's very important. That's why there's a big, that's why academia, whenever they talk about the internal rate of return, they always cite the problems with that and recommend that you use the modified internal rate of return instead. Okay, so all you need to know is that the terminal cash flow, the sum of the future value project cash flows, and the initial capital rate and present value dollars, right? So we can rearrange this formula over here to isolate for MIRR. And so the calculation is dividing the terminal cash flow by the cash outlay, and then root, root to the time period of, for that respective investment. If the investment's five years, then it's N would be five. And then you subtract that by one to get the modified internal rate of return. So let, let's look at a quick, quick example. So here we have a project uh, cash outlay of $1,000 in year zero. And years one to, to three, we receive a project inflow. So cash inflows of $400, $600, and then $300. Essentially, the modified internal rate of return assumes that this $400 received in year zero can be invested at the cost of capital rate in this in this case, 10% for the next two years. So we use the compounding formula. So the present value times one plus I raised to the power of N, you know, we use the compounding formula to calculate the future value of that respective uh, cash inflow. So, you know, for year one, this $400 is invested at, um, you know, 400 times 1.1 raised to the power of two. The $600 would be invested at 600 times 1.1 raised to the power of one. So these are each of the numbers and the cash uh, inflow in the final period and the end of the investment horizon cannot cannot be compounded because we're just looking at that year's uh, dollars, right? So we sum up the 3000 the $484 and the $660 to get $1,444. The cash outlay is $1,000. And then all we have to do is input that into our formula, right? So we take that $1,444. $444, we divide it by 1000 root to the power of three, right? Because that's three years is the investment horizon, we subtract one to get a modified internal rate of return of 13.03%. And this is, will be significantly lower than the the IRR calculation, which is significantly higher. Okay, so consider the following project at a cost of capital of 8%, what is the modified internal rate of return? So this is the first example. So in year zero, we have a cash outlay of $2,500. In years one, we receive 400, year two, 800, year three, 1500, year four, 700, and in year five, 1600. So once again, the, ca the calculation assumes that, you know, we're looking at the present value of the cash outlay. So we don't have to discount this back to the present. It's already in the present. And for the cash inflows, we're compounding the, uh, them out to the future to get this, this cash inflow in year $5. So we use our future value um, formula at a, a discount rate of 8% and project them out. And so we do that, we, uh, we can calculate 400 times 1.08 raised to the power of four, which is $544, 800 times 1.08 raised to the power of three, you know, as we get closer and closer, we, we lower the power number, right? So N becomes lower because it gets closer to the end of the investment horizon. 
And so we project those and compound those out to sum up, and that equals total cash flows in future value terms and future value dollars of year five of $5,657.57. Okay, and we, then we input that into the formula. So our terminal cash flow would be the $5,657. Our cash outlay is the investment, which is $2,500, right? And we input that into the formula. We put the $5,000. Over here in numerator, divide the denominator would be the 2,500, you know, raised to power or at root five because that is the investment horizon in year five, and neg subtract one to get a modified internal rate of return of 17.74 percent. All right, question number two, example number two. So in this case, upstart costs are higher and occur at the end of both year zero, one, and two. At a cost of capital of 12.5%, what is the modified internal rate of return? So in this case, we're not just assuming assuming that the investment is completed and, and uh, built in year zero alone. So we're assuming that it takes maybe two years to complete, right? So we assume a $10,000 investment in year zero, a $4,500 investment in year one, and a $950 investment in year two. Essentially, we want to get the cash outflow in present value terms in year zero terms. So the cash outflows in year one and year two need to be discounted back to the present, right? So we use the discount rate of 12.5% to discount them back to the present. And then for year, the cash inflows, the 6,000, the 7,500, the 1,250, the 8,010, and the $9,000 are compounded out to year seven dollars, right? So they're compounded out to the future. Right? So that's the calculation that we do here. Now, those future value cash outflows simply need to be discounted back to the present. So that's what I talked about. So this needs to be a present value, and this needs to be the future value at the end of the investment horizon. Right. So the cash uh, outlays, the cash outflows are, are discounted back to the present. So discounted at the rate of 12.5%. Right. So, and that gives us 4,750. And then the cash cash inflows are compounded out to the future. And so we do that calculation. You can pause the video if you want. And then we get this uh, these numbers right over here. So for years year one, we discounted that cash outflow of 4,500 to 4,000. And that calculation is seen over here. And then in year two, that $950 is discounted to the present. And that equals $750.62. And then the, year, the cash inflows are compounded out. So our net... Our terminal value cash flow would be $39,882.83, and our cash outlay, our cash outflow, the investment we make into the project, is $14,750.62. You can then input this into the formula. So we take that number, we put it into the uh, numerator, and then take the cash outlay and put that into the denominator. Uh, root of 7, that is the investment horizon, so in year 7 is the end of the investment. And we subtract one to get a modified internal rate of return of 15.27%. So that's the answer for that. Other than that, that's pretty much it. It's a quick video. I just wanted to offer some examples, some more examples. I recommend that if you haven't watched a video already, check out the uh, IRR versus MIRR video where you can really go into the concept and we explain why the IRR investment uh, indicator is flawed and for any financial analyst or anyone working in private equity they should be implementing the modified internal rate of return instead to really judge capital projects other than that if you have any questions and enjoyed the vi or, or enjoyed the video comment below and like and sub subscribe to the channel for more videos thank you so much and have a great day guys